Hey everyone, Naiharo here, and uh, today I want to talk about tanking tier lists. <laughs> so, I don't know if you've noticed recently, but TC Leo with the Tank Club came out with a list, and then so did Hyperion. And after I, I saw the Tank Club one, you know, I uh, disagreed <laughs> uh, fairly strongly on a couple of points. And uh, and so I thought, you know, I thought about doing a, a video talking about it. And then after I see, I saw Hyperion's, I, I was like, okay, yeah, definitely going to do this, going to join the thing. I just want to start off by saying that this is completely just for fun. Okay, which class is best? There's so many factors involved that there's no, it, it's it's all about what situation, you know, what's best for a beginner? What's best in a given trial? What's best in, you know, for a particular group or for a particular group composition? There's a ton of factors that, that go into this and there is no quote unquote best for the most part, okay? So this is just for fun. Don't take it too seriously. And then the other thing that I want to say, and this is probably more important, maybe I should have led with this, is that all tanking classes are now not only viable, but they're not, they're, they're, they're like in a good spot, okay? Like they are all viable and fairly easy to play. Um, you know, some more so than others. Some are going to have some difficulty. There's going to be other things, but, but for the most part, they are all in a in just fine of a place. And that certainly hasn't always been historically true reference Templar tanks, uh, but they're fine now, but they work, but they work well. So, you know, yeah, anyways. Um, and then now to kind of divide it up. So Hyperion, uh, he, uh, divided up into three categories and he said, you know, uh, dungeons, trials, and then beginners. I think that's totally fine. Uh, I don't think TC Lee, I think has done it, divided them up in the past, doing them different ways. Uh, I don't think he divided up his last one. I, I don't recall exactly. You know, I have to watch all these stuff, all these videos just for, you know, see what everybody else is doing. But sometimes I'm like watching them on two, two X speed just to like, Oh, what are we talking about? That kind of thing. Or I skip around, but so uh, forgive me if I, if I didn't catch the whole thing. Um, but after I saw TC Lee's, I, I thought of a way of, you know, uh, you know what? I'd, I'd want to divide that up. So there's three categories that I would divide everything up into. So first off here we have, uh, I would start off with, with the, the high end, uh, top end players, and uh, these are for very optimized groups, people doing hard modes, etc. Now, what tank class you're going to bring is determined by what your raid needs. <laughs> That's it, okay? It doesn't matter what's best for you personally. It doesn't matter about anything else. It's what does your group need, okay? So if, you know, X class is uh, 10K higher than all the others on DPS, most of your DPS are going to be of that class. That's just what you're going to do. And then it's like, okay, cool. We're going to pick supports so that we get the rest of the buffs that we absolutely need. And, you know, if that makes the tanks or the healer's job harder, that's they're just going to have to do a harder job. That's just that's just part of being in an optimized group that is doing extremely hard content. OK, so that's that's for the most part, that's how it works. And then on the opposite end of the scale for beginners. OK, most beginners, what I would personally recommend and, and what I think most people probably would is play the class that you want. Um, there is no class that is like complete garbage. There are some that are harder. There are some that are easier. I absolutely understand that, but it's also so convoluted. So just to give you just an example, a Necro tank is one of the harder tank classes to learn. They have a, a class heal that only works in melee. They have really bad, um, it, it can be difficult to sustain with your stamina. There are issues with a Necro tank. So you think, okay, not good for a beginner group or for a beginner tank. However, <laughs> at the same time, uh, they actually have some pretty good survivability against dots, which is where a lot of the damage and the newest and hardest to do trials is coming from. And they also have necro res. So if everybody, if you're new, chances are that many of the other people in your group are also new. And a necro res is huge and can help save runs. It can help save clears and it can give people a, a much, much better opportunity to learn a given trial. So, you know, where do you, where do you put the necro tank in that situation? So I, I, I would just say for beginners, play the tanking class that looks interesting to you that you want to play. And if you want to know, you know, more about to like really dive in, I've got videos on four of the six tanking classes right now, and I'm working on the last two. And then I'm going to re up a couple that are a little bit older, but are still just fine for guides. And I go through and I talk about all the different pros and cons, why you'd want to use it, different skills, how it works and stuff like that. If you really want to get into it, go watch one of those and it'll tell you all the details and everything else.
All right, so what's the third category? Well, I think the third category is where most people live. And that is where you've ran some trials. Maybe you're still kind of learning, but you're into vet trials. Maybe you've been running vet trials for a long time, but you're looking to move into, into you know, maybe a little bit harder content, but still progging hard modes with maybe a fairly new group. So this is where most people live. And I think this is still a, a spot where most people wouldn't switch and come on a class that they're extremely uncomfortable with. You know, the group is gonna want you to stay alive. They're gonna want you to do a good job, keep good buff up times if you're rocking sets, because those are typically more important than some of your class buffs. And some of your class buffs are just kind of automatic depending on what class you're playing. So anyways, not go without going into too much detail, that's where most people live. And it's like, okay, well, which class do, do you want? Or maybe you're kind of experienced and, and you want to, you know, branch out and, and pick a class that is good for the group and, you know, something like that. So uh, that's where most people live. So I think that's that's really what I want to be talking about today. Because, again, if you're a beginner, pick the class you want to play. Uh, if you're really experienced, you're going to pick the class that the group needs. And so it's really the people that are in between that it really matters for, at least in, in as far as how I take it, uh, you know, how I look at things. So, uh, yeah, I put them all here on D. We're going to move them up and down as things go or maybe leave a few here, uh, depending on on things. So uh, we'll just start with the on the left here. And, uh, and I want to point out that we're, we're rating these classes in between, you know, in reference to each other. So uh, with a necro tank, you know, th this, to me, they, they've lost a lot of group utility. And that's, that's kind of a bummer. So um, I would, I would put them still, however, with necro res and with their survivability, if you get good with them, you know, I, I don't know if I would call them quite S tier, although I want to, uh, it really depends on the group. I'm going to call them A tier. They're very survivable. They can be at least. Um, they can provide some some pretty good ulti gen if uh, you're in a group and you know not everybody's managing their ult properly. You can provide a, a decent amount of, of buff up times. It's going to be really hard as an off tank to keep PA up on them. It's going to be a little bit harder to manage your stamina and everything on them. And again, they don't quite offer the all the buffs that other classes provide right now, but they do have Necro Res that can save a run, and they do provide a, quite a bit of ulti regen. So we're, we're going to call them A tier. I don't think they're quite S tier, uh, but they're pretty good. Uh, next up, we have the DK. Now, DKs, uh, if you looked at my raid optimization videos, if, if you haven't, that's also another good place. If you want to know which class is quote unquote best for like more optimized, you can look and see, well, what, what buffs am I bringing to the group and how does that work? So DKs bring a ton of buffs to the group. And um, some of them you're kind of uniquely suited to bring. So when you think of like things like Stone Giant, if you don't have a DPS doing that, although in most of my groups, I recommend that a DPS just does that uh, with Zins and Alkosh. Um, you know, the, the Igneous Weapons, if, if you want, you know, the group wants to run different potions or if you want to save a buck, depending on what your group is interested in, you know, th there, there's Brutality, there's a handful of things. So I, I would just say that... Uh, a DK tank is uh, is absolutely S tier. You know, the fact that you've got a shield, you've got the best chain in the game, uh, you've got a missile shield, which is very important for certain fights. The, it's not a shield, I'm sorry, but it, it reduces your damage taken from missile attacks by 50%. That's really huge on certain fights. DKs are just all around so, in such a good spot. When you compare that to the Necro, Necros can only use their class heal when they're in melee range. That can be very difficult. Again, being very difficult with, with the... Uh, stamina sustained they don't have a shield for fights that that can be really useful on they don't really have they don't have any damn any missile uh mitigation ability except for from sword and board skill line or cl so basically class agnostic ones so again yeah that's why they go and i, I love my necro all right uh, but i still have to say that it's probably only a and dk is going to be s dk's honestly have gotten so much love for so long like give some love to the other classes. They're starting to do it, but uh, still very much on top. Uh, next up here is the Nightblade tank. So this is a really interesting situation. Nightblade tanks are in a really good spot. And I just want to point out, and actually I'll show some video here. So uh, Hyperion uh, pointed out that, um, or said rather, I don't know if pointed out is the right phrase. He said that they don't have a, a burst heal. They only have heal over times. And so if Dark Cloak doesn't work, um, that's, uh, that's not, that's not actually true. 
Um, yeah, that's just that's just not actually true. So what you would use on a Nightblade tank is a malevolent offering. And uh, I pointed this out in my Nightblade video. You can actually use either either morph is totally fine. So I'm, I'm going to pop some video up here. You'll see that you get about a 10K heal whenever you're buffed from, from the raid dummy. So this is increasing your max health, et cetera, et cetera. So you're getting about a 10K heal. And it only costs uh, 24K mag and a little bit of health. The health is, is essentially negligible. Uh, you wouldn't, I wouldn't worry about it. So, um, I mean, you could subtract it from the total heal and you get a little bit closer to actually being right at 10K as opposed to being 10K and some change because you do take a little bit of damage over time from, from using Malevolent Offering. And that's, that's if you're using Shrewd Offering, which costs a little bit less. But Healthy Offering increases all of your healing done. So, again, it's kind of a wash. Um, so now when you compare that to something like a Warden, and I know we haven't got there. Wardens, you use Polar Wind. Now, Polar Wind um, is like the biggest just straight up, you know, tank heal in the game. When this thing crits, it crits for like 27k. Okay, it's stupid. However, the actual like normal white heal, uh, the amount that you would get is more in the 16 to 17 K range. Now, if you take into account that that ability costs almost twice as much, it costs 4,300 Magicka. And if you just take the, you know, amount healed and divide it by the Magicka cost to kind of get like a, well, how much, how much healing am I getting per Magicka spent? You actually find out that the Nightblade heal is more efficient. And, you know, you would have to cast it twice to get the same amount of healing that you get from Polar Wind. So if there's a GCD to take into account, you know, Polar Wind is obviously all at once. There are pros and cons to that. So, you know, it, does it make sense that it's a little bit different in cost? I think so. I think that it's not quite as a, a huge heal for a Nightblade, but you can use it, you know, more selectively. You can use it more often since it's not so big of a heal and doesn't cost so much. You can just use it to top yourself off. Whereas the Warden heal, you might want to wait until you're a little bit lower on health and then pop it. So anyways, my point is that there are pros and cons to both of these heals, but Nightblades have a 10K, you know, self heal. And that's, that's non-crit. That's just a 10K heal, which is a fourth of your health. And that's in addition to your HOTS, which you're gonna be keeping up all the time anyways, or most of the time, because you just the way Nightblade, Nightblade works, okay? So all that to say, uh, Nightblades actually are very survivable. Now, was Hyperion talking about uh, hard mode, Dread Cell, Reef, uh, Teleria? You know, like, is that what he was talking about? I don't know. He doesn't, he doesn't exactly clarify. I think that might be the case. Maybe that is one situation where, you know, the Nightblade heal uh, doesn't work out, but I've got videos healing just non-hard mode. And for most people, uh, you're not doing hard mode of the hardest trial in the game, right? And if you are, and you need to switch classes, you're going to be able to, because if you're doing the hardest hard mode in the game or one of them, you're, you're going to have multiple classes you can come on. So it, it just applies to like 0.1% of the community or probably less 0.01% of the community. So I, I just think that for most people, that's not a consideration. Uh, I'm going to put Nightblades in S tier. The other thing that a Nightblade can do, in addition to being able to heal other people, which a, a DK can't do, you can shield other people, but you can't directly heal them and you can't do it at a great range and you can't control who your shield goes on, you can do that with a Nightblade, and that's a big deal. You can't do that with a, a, a Necro either. Now, Nightblades also don't have a shield, but they can apply both major and minor cowardice, which can reduce the damage that everybody potentially in the group is taking by a significant amount. We're talking like 10% plus. I haven't worked out the exact numbers, but it's significant. So it's basically the opposite of what you get from uh, Spellpower Cure and Claw of Yolnokrin, you basically have the debuff versions of those where they reduce the enemy's spell power and weapon damage by, you know, that major and minor buffs. It's major and minor cowardice. So that's really cool. Um, you could also do that on a healer, uh, but it's really cool to have on a tank and it's something you can use. They also have their path of darkness. That's really useful. It's useful for the party to be able to give people speed. Um, it also provides a little bit of, of regen with, with some minor buffs that provide more mag and stam regen. You get that in a lot of places. So so again, it's not that big of a deal, uh, but Nightblade's up there and you can actually regenerate a decent amount of ult on them as well. So again, Nightblade's, I think, belong up here in S tier. Uh, they're in a really great spot right now. Uh, next up here is the Templar. Now, uh, Templars are 
uh, in a so much better of a place than they used to be. Okay. They're in a much, much better place. They used to be kind of garbage. And, and I, I made the Templar video and everybody's like, oh man, this is so great to see. People have been telling me Templars are garbage for so long. And, uh, and you know, a lot of them had to be like, yeah, they, those people aren't, they weren't wrong. They're just, they have outdated information. So Templars are in a much better spot than they were. Uh, so now I, I would honestly say probably a tier. I don't think they belong in S tier. They don't really provide a lot of unique buffs to the group, not things you could really get anywhere else. Probably you're going to have, uh, be able to get any buffs that you want from a DPS or something else pretty easily. Um, but they're in a good spot. They work, they work really well. Uh, having a class shield works really well. So having a class shield usually makes you a little bit more survivable and, and easy to deal with on certain fights. One of the classic ones is cloud rest with Zamaja, her heavy attack, uh, does quite a bit of damage. So if you have a missile shield or some kind of shield that can really help mitigate that damage. So uh, I'm going to go with a tier for Templar. You can help cleanse the group. You can help with a little bit of heals on the group and stuff like that. You know, they're, they're just in a good spot. They're not too hard to keep up. You've got a lot of choices. If you're, if you're on a different, uh, non, maybe non meta race, there are several abilities you can swap around that will use mag instead of stam or give you mag recovery instead of stam recovery or vice versa. So uh, that's some pretty nice utility on the Templar side. Their class heal still isn't amazing, but it doesn't, it, it's not horrible, horrible anymore. And now with the changes to Vigor, you can just use that and just kind of have a heal over time set up on them. So, you know, not too bad. And then moving on uh, to the Sork tank. And I guess, honestly, maybe I should, I don't know. I almost feel like I need to move the Necro down a little bit. And I hate to do that just because uh, they are so good at being survivable and uh, in certain situations, but they are very tricky and there is, you know, some difficulty with Stam sustain. So I don't know, maybe we'll put them on the same list, but we'll put it behind them. Now, next up, we have uh, Warden Tanks. And I, of course, I already started talking about this a little bit. Now, Warden Tanks have, uh, there's an issue for me with, with Warden Tanks. And that is that every single morph of an ability that would help you survive as a tank, not every single one, many of the morphs you have as a tank you, that you want to take as a tank to help your own survivability, to help keep you alive and help you tank stuff. The other morph will buff the group. And that is extremely frustrating for me. So uh, it, it's just frustrating that you have to choose between buffing the group or being survivable, and it's a skill morph too. So it's not something you can swap in the middle of a trial. So I think it puts them in an awkward situation where you've got to leave in the middle of a trial, which is weird, it could be embarrassing, to go swap a skill, or you might have people telling you, hey, use the other morph because you're dying. Or you might have people telling you, hey, use the other morph because it buffs the group, and then you're dying. So there's just it, it just creates some problems to me uh, with the Warden tank. If you're just trying to survive, if you're a beginner, it's still a, it's a great class. There's absolutely nothing wrong with this class. Their Polar Wind is just a massive, massive heal, and it has a heal over time component in addition to having a huge burst heal. So, uh, you know, I didn't take that into account when I was talking about the efficiency of a Nightblade and a Warden heal, you know, to kind of compare. Um, so, you know, it would come out still on top of a Nightblade, but again, there's other things without getting too much into it that recommend a night blade and, and actually, you know, many different kinds of hots are going to have up. So, uh, it's not an apples to apples comparison or it's not easy to make one. So just to give you a couple example, polar wind, uh, the other morph of that is Arctic blast. Now Arctic blast will not heal, heal you for nearly as much as polar wind. And it's a little bit underpower as a, as a class burst heal. However, it does do a really good job of applying minor brittle if you're rocking an ice staff. And so that's huge. Uh, I recently did a video about that talking about how good Arctic Blast is. So again, it's a situation you got this really good ability that could help really help you keep up brittle by just bar swapping every, you know, four seconds or so. And, uh, you know, the other option is like a huge and, and amazing class self heal. So again, you know, which, which do you choose? Another example of that is going to be with your frost cloak. So there's expansive cloak, which gives major resistances to your entire group, basically. And then there's ice fortress, which gives you minor protection but only affects you. So that reduces your damage taken by another 5%. So I have the choice of either doing something selfish for myself or buffing the group. And it's a skill morph. So again, just really hard to change in the middle of a trial, something that could be hard to kind of learn to deal with. And I just don't like it. I don't love it. Uh, the other thing, corrupting pollen for the minor, um, 
for the minor cowardice, which is one of the buffs that you can get both minor and major cowardice from the Nightblade. So you can get it from Corrupting Pollen. The only thing to me is that Budding Seeds is, is better and actually works as a self-heal. And since you don't have a normal shield, I would usually recommend rocking Budding Seeds um, instead of Corrupting Pollen. And Nightblades can just do it easier, in my opinion. So, you know, here or there, it is an AoE, but so is the Nightblade. It's a bigger AoE. I don't know. You could argue, but they only have minor. They don't have major. Uh, the other thing, and the kind of last thing, as I would say, is that you're almost always going to have a Warden Healer in the group. OK, so and this is in a trial setting, maybe in four mans and I'll talk about four mans at the end. But you're, you're almost always going to have a warden healer in the group and you want one because all of the morphs that you wouldn't want to tank take as a tank, you 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 are totally fine with taking as a healer. So the expansive cloak, totally fine to take as a healer. You don't really need the minor protection anyways. Why not take it? You know, um, Arctic Blast absolutely could take that as a healer. You don't need the the other morph. Um, you could use the other morph if you need a single target to heal, but you you don't you absolutely don't need to. So you kind of again you end up in the situation where it kind of makes sense to have a warden healer. So I'm actually going to put them in. Man, I hate to do it. I don't think the spread is that wide. I'm I'm going to call it B tier. Um, you know what? I'm going to call it C tier just because again, uh, it's, it's not that they're a bad, bad tanking class. It's just that you have to make this, this choice of making it you know, much harder for yourself to survive and live or, you know, buffing the group. And that's kind of a bummer situation. I just don't love where they're at. And I love wardens. Don't get me wrong. Same, same with these other classes. I enjoy all of them. I'm not trying to hate on them. I just think it would be really nice if you could buff the group and keep yourself alive, I wish it wasn't such a binary choice. You have to do one or the other. It just makes it a little bit hard and a little bit more tricky to pick this class. And then last, we have the Sork. So uh, Sorks are kind of an interesting... You know what? I'm going to move I'm moving more than up to B. Uh, <laughs> uh, sorks are kind of an interesting class. You know, you do have a little bit of group utility that you can provide. It's not a great amount. You can make yourself extremely survivable. So if you're trying to go into content and your goal is just to stay alive, Sork could be very high on the list here. However, generally speaking, you're not in that situation. You're trying to buff the group. You're trying to provide utility. Um, the other thing is that Dark Deal is an ability you can use a lot. So Dark Deal, uh, you sacrifice one resource to gain many of the other resources, so the other two resources. So, uh, but it also drops block. So it's a huge heal. Uh, both both morphs, one provides mag and costs stam. The other one provides stam and costs mag. And you can choose which one you want. The problem is for new tanks is that they often die trying to use this because it does it does drop block. And so you know that makes it well you're super survivable but then you're kind of not if you get hit at the wrong time if you don't know the fight really well and then you know so it's it's more maybe for an experienced person if they just need to stay alive but if you're really experienced do you need to just stay alive I don't know. There's there's just a lot of convoluting factors. The main thing for me is they don't provide a ton of of group utility um, generally speaking. Yes they can provide some unique buffs uh, with major berserk but uh, you know, most people aren't going to be able to keep good uptimes on that, aren't going to be able to use it very often and do a great job with ulti generating. Um, so for me, I and, and again, I don't I don't hate him. I think I'm going to put it at C and I'm intentionally leaving D blank here. And my point with leaving D blank here, maybe there should be an E, uh, is that. You know, there's a the, historically classes have been in D and E and F tier, and none of them are right now. So there is a lot of room beneath this. Most of the tanking classes are in a pretty good spot. The things that I would like to see or, or would be possible, you know, at least in my mind, to move these classes up, if a warden tank could provide more buffs to the group while still remaining tanky, um, that would move it up probably to A tier for me. The thing I, I wouldn't put it, reason I wouldn't put them in S tier is because a warden healer is what you're going to want instead. And if you have one of those, you don't really need a warden tank. So still doesn't go to S tier for me. Uh, for a Sork, you know, you can, you're probably going to get have a Sork in group and get the, the unique class buffs from a, a DPS. Yeah, there are a few that a tank is kind of uniquely suited to bring to a group, but they're a little finicky. They're hard to keep up times. It's uh, or they're not that great of a benefit. So, you know, like the extra thousand, you know, resistant debuff you could get from using, you know, from one of their skills. So uh, it's just not something that.
that I, I don't know. I just don't see them in a great spot. Are they fun to play? Heck yeah. I mean, the fact that you've constantly got, you know, you could do minor expedition or you can get on access whenever you need it, major expedition uh, with a skill with your hurricane or, or, or whichever morph you, you want to choose your boundless storm to uh, provide you know, speed for yourself, that, that could be very helpful as a tank in a surprising number of situations using streak can be extremely fun and can actually be useful in a couple of situations. Uh, mostly it's just fun. Uh, so, you know, there's stuff like that. Uh, they are extremely survivable. Again, if you, you're learning new content, um, as long as you know when you can drop block and when you can't, uh, you know, there, there's a lack of bar space. So I don't know. I don't know what would need to happen to, to increase the Sork. I guess some more group utility and group buffs would need to happen for me to want to move them up anywhere. Uh, but uh, as it stands, I think this is kind of my tier list here. I'd actually put Necro in front of Templar. Um, and this is actually like a decent list for me. So anyways, I just thought this was a fun kind of thought experiment. So I want to talk about it. Oh yeah, let me, uh, all right, now let me talk about uh, uh, the situations with four mans and dungeons, because this is something that Hyperion talked about quite a bit. So uh, for me, and most of the people I know, whenever you go into a four-man dungeon, you're going with a group of people that you know. And it's it's a much smaller group of people. And there's only kind of, again, the same situation where it's, there's a couple of situations. So one, uh, everybody is, is challenged by the content you're going into. And so you're probably going to bring the class you're most comfortable on. And so that's what's going to decide. Maybe you've got one or two classes you can decide between. You know, maybe you're like, oh, you know what? I'm good on a DK and a Necro, or I'm good on a Templar and a DK, you know, for a tank or something. Okay, well then, cool. Maybe you pick one over the other based on what everybody else in the group is using. Uh, another situation might be that, you know, the group is all extremely experienced and you're, you're, you're going into in trifectas and you know, you know, you know what's going on. Uh, people can, can parse very high on many classes. You can tank on many classes and then you're kind of just like picking one that is most optimal for the group. And, and that's kind of a situation where it, it's going to be pretty easy to pick that. And in that situation, you know, probably a warden, you're going with those abilities that buff the group and doing a few different things. But Again, those people I don't think really need advice, so I, I try not to make videos for people at that at that level of play because I think most of them can kind of figure it out for themselves. Uh, you know, I still try to provide informative and useful info for that kind of group of people, but in general, you don't need me telling you what to do because you can already make all those decisions for yourself or suggesting anything. I'm sorry, not telling what to do, but like suggesting anything because you already know what to do. You can kind of make that decision for yourself. Um, and then kind of, the, again, the same situation where you have everybody in between. And I think most of the time you can only switch one or two classes. You know, most of the time you're bringing a healer because your friend is a healer and because some fights you need a healer and it's not a lot of healer mains uh, don't have an amazing DPS they can bring and it becomes, you know, less efficient and less useful to have three DPS, one tank in groups like that. So you're probably, again, going to bring, and they can have a warden, so they're probably going to bring that, so then a warden tank doesn't make a whole lot of sense, and so on and so forth. My point is that most of the factors that are going to affect what you choose are not going to be related to what is quote unquote best. It's going to be related to who who's running with you, who are your friends, what classes are they comfortable on, what classes are you comfortable on. So, um, you know, my, not not to say hey, there's no point in doing this. Again, I think it's a very fun exercise, but that's just kind of my take on it. So, so I'm, I'm, I missed a lot of things. I didn't talk about a lot of things in this video. Uh, you know, so w tell me, tell me below. I'm sure many of you are like, hey, you know, you didn't take this into account for this class and whatever. And you know, a lot of that stuff I may know, but a lot of it I may not. So tell me, tell me what you like best about your class, your favorite tanking class below. I would be really interested to hear that um, because you know, getting feedback from you guys and getting you know different experience levels and stuff like that can be really helpful for me, and it's also very fun. So uh, leave a comment below, kind of tell your basic, you know, experience level so that we kind of know where you're coming from and, and let me know what you like best about your favorite tanking class. Anyways, guys, that's it for this video. I hope this was uh, fun and entertaining for you guys as it was for me to kind of talk about this stuff. Uh, if it was, you know what to do. Leave a like below. And uh, just a heads up, if you want to support the channel, uh, you can now, memberships are now available. It's kind of like a sub on Twitch. 
It starts for as little as one dollar a month. If you'd like to support the channel, support me. You know, there's a lot that goes into making these videos, uh, equipment, and everything else that I need. So uh, it's just a really huge support for me, and it allows me to spend more time on them and provide more great content. But uh, thanks everybody for watching. I really appreciate it, and uh, we'll catch you in the next one.